all very much for being here and everyone who helped plan the event and uh, support it through the years. I also want to talk a little bit about what the plan is uh, in case there was any uh, any unclear instructions and um, if we have rain we're just going to move everything inside we're going to cancel the walk but generally uh, the way this event has taken place is we congregate somewhere around the Union in the multicultural center and then we walk down to um, the Trail of Tears Memorial uh, Monument that's on the corner of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and uh, Stadium Drive. And that's a pretty significant walk, so I hope you all brought uh, comfortable shoes, maybe a water bottle. Um, we will head down there, and unfortunately, the mayor had to cancel last minute. He's not going to be present to read the proclamation from the city of Fayetteville, but uh, he will, um, he did send a proclamation and we're gonna have it read by uh, the president of the Native American Student Association. And then um, if you all have the time to walk back up here, there will be uh, some refreshments waiting for us uh, at the reception at the end of the walk. So I know it's a big commitment and I just wanna make sure starting out that everyone knows what they're getting themselves into. How's the volume by the way? Is this loud enough? Okay, there you go. Okay, well, uh, I can introduce my, maybe I should have started with an introduction. Uh, Yo, Summer Wilkie, Dawado, my name is Summer. And I go to E, Tessa, but uh, where I live now is uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, where we are today. And um, I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm going to uh, kick this off with the land acknowledgement statement because I'm a citizen of the Cherokee Nation and uh, Cherokees have a um, rich history in this area, which we'll be kind of celebrating today and acknowledging through our walk. Um, but there were uh, Cherokee people settled here before that, and we are settlers here, along with most of the people in the audience today. And the original people here um, in Northwest Arkansas uh, were the Osage Nation and their ancestors and the Quapaw and Cata Nations. Um, and uh, they were dispossessed of their land here and removed to uh, northern Oklahoma, uh, except the Cato Nation who traveled south. And then um, many other tribes were removed through the state of Arkansas or settled here for a time as they were being displaced from their homes. And so the Cherokee Nation is one of those tribes, as I mentioned, but then also um, the Delaware, the Choctaw, the Muscogee, the Chickasaw, the Shawnee, the Kickapoo, Peoria, and Seminole Nations are um, ones who pass through the state. And as they were being displaced from their homes, uh, removed generally by force or coercion, um, and uh, I'd also like to further state that uh, as a land-grant institution, the University of Arkansas, even to this day, continues to benefit from the dispossession of indigenous land. And over 180 um, indigenous tribes and bands uh, have been impacted by our land grant, which formed the majority of the, um, of the uh, funds that you know were the startup for the University of Arkansas, the capital that started this um, this university. So uh, thank you for listening as I uh, stammer through an acknowledgement. And just thank you again for being here, what all. And um, uh, our concept for this open mic today is to just invite anyone in the audience who uh, identifies as indigenous to uh, especially indigenous to the Americas, we want to prioritize those voices um, because uh, this holiday uh, historically um, has been in celebration of a uh, history of the colonization of the Americas. Uh, but we are flipping the script today to turn it into a celebration of indigenous people's resilience and uh, continued um, survivance and success 
in our indigenous lands. So uh, thank you again so much for being here. And uh, we can um, just, if, if everybody rushes up to the mic at once, then I'll start a list of who can uh, speak. But um, don't be shy because we definitely want to hear from all of you. Um, and I'll just walk away now. And anybody who uh, got something to say, please come take over. Thank you again for being here. share some thoughts with you from Wilma Manko, one of our great women. Um, she was principal chief from 1985 to 95, Cherokee Nation, and just an incredible inspiration to me. I had the opportunity to meet her and work with her a little bit and with her husband, Charlie Soton, uh, more extensively, and inspired at levels that uh, I don't know how to express. From her book, Every Day is a Good Day, when Cherokee people lived in our old country in the southeast, there was little ambiguity about what it meant to be a good person. Every, everyone had clearly defined roles, and the rules of conduct governing right and correct actions were understood. A good person was prudent in relationships with others and conducted his or her affairs with honor, respect, and dignity. Each year, one Cherokee ceremony in a series, there were seven generally, was conducted in each settlement for the explicit purposes of rekindling relationships, requesting forgiveness for inappropriate conduct during the previous year and cleansing the minds of Cherokee people of any negative thoughts towards others. As a side note, growing up in tribal communities, I can tell you that's not an uncommon experience um, in this, uh, any small town. One can detect elements of this ceremony in contemporary Cherokee life when the following prayer is reciting at the beginning of a gathering. First, let's remove all negative thoughts from our minds so we can come together as one. The primary goal of the prayer is to promote a sense of oneness and unity. Negative thoughts were treated by Cherokee healers with the same medicines as wounds, headaches, and physical illnesses. It was believed that unchecked negative thoughts can permeate the being and manifest themselves in negative actions. And I've contemplated this a lot, especially these days, because negative thoughts, how do you respond to hate? How do you respond to other people's hate? How do you respond to a dialogue of hate? And what I take from this is what my father taught me. Hate just breeds more hate. And that's destructive, more destructive than a consuming fire. Now, I will share this final thought with you from, from Wilma, uh, also from Every Day is a Good Day. It is remarkable that indigenous women continue to value traditional knowledge and original institutions after the people have endured war, removal, loss of land, resources and rights, and wholesale attempts at assimilation. If they continue to have strong, viable communities and manage to hold on to a robust sense of who they are, despite the staggering amount of adversity they have faced, they can surely be confident that 500 years from now, there will be culturally distinct communities of indigenous people on these lands. Thank you, Wendy. Now, my wife is Muscogee Creek, and I can tell you as matriarchal cultures, I can't represent the Cherokee people without also acknowledging the culture of the Muscogee Creek because, you know, they're the boss. So, remember, from Joy Harjo, Joy was the poet laureate under, the first Native American poet laureate under President Obama. Remember the sky that you were born under. Know each of the stars' stories. Remember the new moon, know who she is. Remember the sun's birth at dawn. That is the strongest point in time. Remember sundown and the giving away to night. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath, 
You are evidence of her life and her mother's and hers. Remember your father, he is your life also. Remember the earth whose skin you are. Red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth. We are earth. Remember the plants, trees, animal life, who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk to them, listen to them. They are alive points. Remember the wind. Remember her voice. She knows the origin of the universe. Remember, you are all people, and all people are you. Remember, you are this universe, and this universe is you. Remember, all is in motion, all is growing, is you. Remember, language comes from this. Remember, the dance language is, that life is, remember. My name is Jane Kuhn. I'm a student at the University of Arkansas. My son has the privilege of working for Leslie in the Multicultural Center, uh, Brian Hembry, and I am blessed to be here and be a part of the Cherokee 1, 2, and 3 classes. We're so grateful to Dr. Tuton, Dr. Jones, Leslie, and all the people that brought this together and the NASA group because it is so crucial that we never forget. And one of the things, um, I worked on some research um, in Cherokee, North Carolina, where our family's from, well, the Cherokee started. And uh, there at the Okanilofte River, they I bought this shirt there and talked to the Junaluskas. And basically it says, Na, Na, Chalagi, Sio, Sio, Che Daha, which is the Cherokee. We are still here. We're not gone. And that's what we were talking with Dr. Frank. Uh, who was uh, blessed to walk with the Katua Band on their great walk when it came into Arkansas. They're wonderful people. My son and I have done extensive research uh, in within the Cherokee, and we have Cherokee blood. Our Cherokee is the Eastern Band. We have the three, uh, Eastern Band, Katua Band, and the Cherokee Nation. And when I was there at Cherokee, North Carolina, they said, we are all one, Jane. And I said, yes, we are. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. God, God. And God gave you, I love you, my brothers and sisters. And thank you again so much to those that care to not let this die and to let us continue with the language. And to our wonderful professor, I wish he were here. He's teaching classes, Professor Kanta Claudici. So, Wado, Doda Dagahui, and God gave you, my brothers and sisters. I see you on the walk. Castillo-Reyes. I am a senior here at University of Arkansas. You know, I was having a lot of self-doubt this morning whenever I was thinking about if whether or not it was okay for me to be able to participate in events such as today. But after many years, I have finally understood that I am indigenous. I have constantly been called Mexican, Hispanic, and this term now Latinx to describe my experiences as an indigenous person from the Americas. For a very long time, I didn't know who I was. I lived in a predominantly white community and uh, there was not much understanding of race outside of the black and white binary. For many times, I went through identity crisis after identity as a queer person living in Arkansas, as a Latinx person with indigenous descent living in Arkansas. I didn't know who I was. I didn't have a community. But now knowing the knowledge that I have, that we are a community that has so many people, brothers and sisters and everything in between and outside of the binary, I know now that we have a community that has been resilient since the day that Christopher Columbus took step in Hispaniola. We see that, that we are actively trying to be displaced within America and within the Americas, in Bolivia, Ecuador, the United States, and all of the nations. And we understand now that we have community, and I'm so thankful for everyone that is present here because it's good to remember that we are a community and we are still here and we are actively fighting displacement. But as long as we band together, we are strong. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Oh, hello. 
my name is Marco and I am indigenous to the Americas and to the Congo. And um, I just wanted to say today that like like others, I've been having an identity crisis. Like, should I come up here? Am I indigenous enough to come up here? And it makes me realize that like, you know, this is just, my belief is the colonialist way that, you know, I'm not indigenous enough, that there is like, you know, a percent that makes you indigenous, that there's a skin color that makes you indigenous. But we need to band as one because we, have an issue in our communities that we are being displaced and that there is like a white supremacy going on that won't, that does not let us connect as a community and that we need to fight together and we need to realize that we are one no matter what skin color no matter what country we are one people and that we need to fight together in order to help those who can't speak and to become one and thank you i'm sorry i'm really shaky but happy indigenous people day and be proud of who you are Hello, hey y'all. My name is Jessica Walden. I currently serve as the Native American Student Association president. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, so just a really um, exciting and thankful for everyone who is here right now, showing their support and just love and remembrance for this day. Um, I know there are many people who may take this day as Columbus Day, and I would like to say it is not. <laughs> um, so after Christopher Columbus, I would say the word, but I'm not. Um, for those who may not know, I am part of the Choctaw Nation, which is part of like the 10 counties and down the corner of Oklahoma. I'm actually from Texas, so being a part of my Choctaw heritage has been kind of rough with growing up not in Oklahoma. So when I became um, part of the executive board last year for NASA, Summer Loki um, and Freddie Bowles was a big help of like getting back into like my culture. Um, so was my president last year, Jamie Black, and my also my other executive member, who's now Vice President Alex Davis. Sorry, I gotta shout them out because I was like, sorry, I have to shout them out because they are a huge proponent of helping me in any way get closer to my culture and taking me to many events. So everybody who's here, you are heard, you are seen, and those who maybe who have talked about their identity crisis, I just want you to know this is a safe space and we are so thankful. So thank y'all so much for coming and I will see y'all on the walk. Bonjour, my name is Mago Nodo. I am a member of the Kaosman and I am a member of the Kaosman. Uh, my name is Ben Ramirez. I am the uh, Multicultural Indigenous Multicultural Programming Coordinator here at the MC. Um, I am just very happy and thrilled to hear everything that you all are saying, what you all are working through, what you all are understanding. That is uh, the path towards decolonization. And I want you to know that every time we learn our language, every time we keep those practices alive, Leslie, we give a big middle finger to white supremacy, uh, and that is exactly what needs to happen. We are still here, um, unapologetically here, and uh, we we absolutely see when I that first phrase there uh, when I said "bujun in Dinway Mabunuduk," I said "hello, all my relatives." Yes, we're all my relatives, and that's every day when I come to work, I have that in mind. And I try to treat every single person like a relative, unless they pull the the malarkey card. I'll, I'll keep it clean with you. Sorry. Okay. Anyways, um, when I think about my own journey, for a long time I actually didn't talk about my own indigeneity. I actually kept it hidden because of uh, constant challenges from students from teachers growing up, 
So I would just say I'm Mexican American, and I said that until I was uh, 32 years old. And I didn't start looking at my indigeneity until I was about 34. So for the past six years now, I have just devoted my time to learning my language with my father, learning my culture, cultural practices. Um, one of the things that I, I do now is I actually uh, I uh, sing to my daughter, which sometimes I can't do without crying because I know what white supremacy has done to make sure that that never happened. Also to make sure that I never hold my baby. This is, this is not something, again, settler colonization is not something that is relegated to the past. It's right here, right now. So, um, maybe you, I'm done. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamie. I was the NASA president last year. Um, apart from everyone else, I am from the res. So, um, I just wanted to come up here and say that as someone who grew up in a Native American community, that it doesn't matter where you come from, what your blue card says, you are valued here. And this is a safe space, just like Jess said. Um, it doesn't matter if you are relearning, if you're trying to reconnect, we're all family here. And they wanted me to sing you a song, but I'm not a good singer, so um, I won't. But yeah, I just really wanted to say, you know, as someone who grew up with the indigenous practices and that way of life, it doesn't matter where you come from. And we all love you, so. Okay, great. That's wonderful. Uh, let's just kind of meet up 
over here in the corner and please uh, walk very safely. Look out for one another as we head down there. It's almost a mile to the marker, so we're looking at about a two mile walk and we're coming back up a big hill, don't forget. So uh, just know what you're getting yourselves into, but we would love you all to join us as we walk down there. Um, uh, me and a couple of the NASA leaders will kind of lead the way, I think. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you.